Welcome to Women Take Over with me, Precious Mike. On today's show, I would just like to discuss my movement, which is called I Won't Stay Silent. I Won't Stay Silent is a movement that focuses on the injustice or the unjust laws that are being passed in, in countries, and especially in our country. And most of the time when these laws are being passed, it's done without the consent of the citizens and only to find out later on when you've got a certain problem and you want to deal with it legally, you'll find that the law is actually against you or it has been changed or uh, amended without us uh, having a vote in it. What I would like to discuss first um, is the Termination of Pregnancy Act, right? Uh, the Termination of Pregnancy Act says that a child from the age of 12 years can have an abortion without the parent's consent. So what that means is that even a child from the age of 10 can actually have an abortion without the parent's consent. So what that actually, the danger of that is that someone can abuse your child, someone can rape your child, and then take the child to an abortion clinic. They would have an abortion and then come back and continue abusing the child. And the dangers of that also is that it conflicts um, with the sexual act law, which says that if anyone has sex with a child under the age of 16 years, that is considered statutory rape. So the law of the termination of pregnancy is a law on its own. It is independent of all our laws in South Africa. It is independent of the family law. It is independent of the sexual acts law. It is independent of the Children's Act. So it is a law that goes against the other laws. So these are the cases that we need to look at. We cannot sit as a country, we cannot sit as citizens, and especially as men and women, and keep quiet on these type of issues. If we look, I'm just going to share with you just a few of the laws that we have in our country. It says that, okay, it says here, children capable of consenting to sex are children who are 16 years and above. So by law, children from 16 above can have sex without any parental consent. They are mature enough to make that decision. And it also says that children capable but not mature enough to consent to sex are children between the ages of 12 and 16 years. And it says that the age <coughs> is considered, the child is considered capable but not mature enough to have sex. So if the law says that a child <coughs> between the ages of 12 and 16 is capable but not mature enough to have <coughs> sex, yet the termination of pregnancy act says that a child from the age of 12 years can have an abortion without the consent of a parent. So can you even see right now that the, the two really conflict each other? Because the state recognizes that a child between the ages of 12 and 16 is not mature enough to make that decision. Yet the other law, which is the Termination of Pregnancy Act, says that the child is it's capable they don't need parental consent. They, know, they don't need anyone's consent. They can just go and have, have an abortion and that's it. So your child can actually wake up and you think that your child is going to school and they're actually going to an abortion clinic and having an abortion. And the dangers of that is that when you have an abortion, an abortion doesn't only just affect us physically, but it can also affect a child mentally emotionally as well as spiritually because remember that act alone of what they went through they have to carry that on their own they're hiding it they're hiding it from everyone they probably feel ashamed or they've been made to feel ashamed especially if a child is being raped or is being abused or is being taken advantage of by an older person so they have to deal with that and if you look at that look at our society today how our children are children as young as 12, as young as 10, are being diagnosed with depression. Where does it come from? If our children are being taught that they can do anything without the consent of a parent, they can do anything, they can manage themselves 
without the parents. So what the law basically says is that children can grow themselves up. They can look after themselves. They can groom themselves. They don't need anyone else, which, co which conflicts with the, 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 the structure of family, you know, the structure of a child being protected within a family by their parents, by the mother or the father or both parents. We also look at um, the act which says um, children from as young as 12 years, right? A child, it is illegal not to provide a child with condoms. So a child can go to a shop at the age of 12 years old and, you know, and get condoms, which is fine. And yet the age, the legal age of having sex is 16. But if you deny to sell a child condoms at, at the age of 12, then it is illegal for you to do that. And yet you can sell alcohol to a child from the age of 18. Um, even contraceptives, a child can go to a clinic from the age of 12 years old without consent and still have and get contraceptives without the parent's consent. But having alcohol or, or smoking, you cannot even smoke in front of a child unless the child is of age. So the child has to be from 16 above. But when it comes to sex, it is from 12 years, they are unprotected from the age of 12 years. They are given that freedom to do things or to make the type of decisions without the parents' consent from the age of 12 years old. So in the Termination of Pregnancy Act says on its own that a woman is considered any female, any female, any person born a female is considered a woman. And yet the Children's Act says that any person under the age of 18 years is still a minor and is still under the guardianship of their parents or their guardian. So they, are, they still need to be protected. They still need that consent. They still need that guidance. The Family Law Act says that a child who is under the age of 18, right, cannot decide which parent they want to live with because they are not matured enough to make that decision because a child can be manipulated by one of the parent that has got more material things, that parent can manipulate the child to actually stay with them. So parents cannot decide that. It is only the court that can decide that. Reason being that they are not matured enough to make that decision. <coughs> Hence, I'm saying yet, the Termination of Pregnancy Act that came into our country, that is actually from Planned Parenthood, is saying that our children from the age of 10 years, from the age of 12 years, are matured enough to have an abortion. So what this, our movement is, we're standing against these type of laws. They are very unjust. They are there to harm our society. They are there to harm our kids. Just as much as we are standing against the gender-based violence. When you talk about gender-based violence, we have seen that in our country, most of the time when you talk about gender-based violence, we actually it, it, the, the focus is more on men, I mean on women and children and persons with disabil disabilities to the point that our government has appointed a minister for women, for children and persons with disabilities. But there is no minister for men. When you talk about gender-based violence, the men are not mentioned at all. The plea and the cries of men are not mentioned at all. And which is very wrong because if we are saying as a society that men are the problem, then surely we should be providing them a, with a service. We should be providing them with help. We should have a minister where they, that they can sit in parliament and you know plead their voices. They should have an outlet where they can go to and plead their voices. If they are being abused, they go to the police station. They are being laughed at. If the woman is hitting them, they can't go anywhere because the stigma is that men should be strong, men shouldn't cry, men do not get abused, men cannot get raped, which is very wrong. It is, it, it is 
falls to the core. We've got many men who are wounded. We've got many men who are being abused by women. We've got many men from childhood who are carrying scars into adulthood and taking it out right now on, 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 on women or on children. We've got women who are abused and who are taking out their pain on men and on children. So in order to combat this, what we are saying as I won't say, uh, say, uh, stay silent, is that let us stand together as men and as women to fight this thing together. We, it cannot be men against women or women against men or men and women against other men. But we're saying that let us stand together, both male and female, to fight the situation. Because if we fight each other, that division between the two sexes, it, it, it becomes broader and broader. To the point that while we are busy fighting one another, who is raising our kids? Who is influencing our kids? What's happening in our families? If the mother and the father is fighting, what about the child? What is happening? If you look at it even now, while we are busy fighting, they've implemented a law, the CSE education, where they teach our kids about comprehensive sexual education without our consent. While we are busy fighting, they are implementing laws to destroy the kids. And now the kids are being raised by these laws. And these kids are being trained that you do not need your parents. You can advocate for yourself. You can make your own decisions. And these are the things that we need to be focusing on instead of fighting each other. Remember when God created us, he created us both male and female. And he said together, he blessed us and he said, multiply, be fruitful and take dominion. So what God was actually saying was that men and a woman increase. So when God says increase and multiply, he was talking about family. He was saying that go and build a family, have your family, you know, take care of it and increase. But now in order for that plan to succeed, God needed both the man and the woman together in unity to make that succeed. And that was the plan of God. So what the enemy did was just to break this unity, divide, divide and conquer. So he divided the men from the woman, the woman from the men, and together we are standing at each other's throats and fighting instead of taking care of our homes and taking care of our families and taking care of our children and making sure that this mandate, we are raising up children who will be fruitful in society, who will be beneficial in society. We've got a lot of children crying out because they do not have fathers. We do have a lot of children crying out because the mothers are absent, the fathers are absent. They do not, they, they have no one. All they have is each other. So it is, it's one person who doesn't know much, depending on another person who doesn't know much. And both of them need help. And they're trying to help each other. So they do not have structure. That is why look at our communities, look at our families. It is, it, it, it is breaking down. Parents no longer care about kids. Parents are no longer interested in what children are doing. They are no longer interested in the well-being of their kids. They are just fine that the kids are raising themselves. The kids are separated from the parents. The whole mandate has been changed. If you look at how the system has, has, has designed this whole thing, how the enemy has designed this whole thing, God made it to be in, 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 in a family structure. God has made it that it is, it is God, it is the men, it is the woman, then it is the children. But now the enemy has turned it around. Now the enemy has made it that it is now the children, then it is the woman, then it is the man, then it is God. Small portion, God underneath. And what we need to do right now, especially as children of God, is to stand up and start walking in purpose. It is to stand up and start walking in our mandate. It is to stand up and go back to the foundation of creation. Created him. He created them both male and female together and blessed them to take and told them to go and take dominion. 
So right now, we need to, we cannot be fighting each other. We cannot be sitting around and fighting each other while everything is falling apart. We cannot be part of the enemy's plan to divide and conquer. He divided us. We've been wounded. We've wounded each other. The male have wounded the female. The female have wounded the male. And both of us are standing at each other's throats wounded. It is time for us to go back to the foundation. It is time for us to go back to the word of God. It is time for us to go back and repent before God and say, Lord, we are here. We're going back to our, to our foundation. We are going back to the beginning, what you have created us to be and fulfilling this mandate. And in doing so, there is so much that will be done in this family structure. There is so much we can save our kids because the kids right now are lost. And I'm specifically talking to the women. I am not standing up for men. I know the pain, the pain of being abused. I have been abused by a stepfather. I have, I have been sexually abused by another male. I have been poured with petrol by a partner and almost set a light. I, I, I know what abuse is. I know what it is like, but it, it does not give me an excuse to come out and say that all men are bad. Because all men are not bad. There are men that make bad decisions. And I can tell you even today, the very same person that poured petrol on me at that time, right now, is a changed person. He is restored, he is in Christ, he's a changed person. He made, a, he made a bad choice at that time. I have forgiven him. And in saying so, I still say that we as women, we cannot be part of the, enem uh, the enemy's plan to destroy the male species. We cannot, we need each other. The male and the female together presents the image of God we represent, we showcase the image of God. We cannot showcase the image of God as women alone. We cannot showcase the image of God as men alone. But as male and female together, that is how we showcase the, the image of God. So right now I am talking to my sisters and I am saying, let us get together as women and start to heal. We cannot be out there calling men trash. We cannot be out there calling men dogs. The very same men that we are putting down are the very same men who are fathers to our kids, are the very same men who are fathers to us. So we cannot, we are, we, we are called to protect them. We are called to protect our families. We are called to protect our households. Because the word of the, of the Lord says in, in, in the book of Proverbs that a wise woman builds her home, but a foolish one destroys it with her hands. And it is not just talking about married women. It is talking about women in general. Whether you are a single parent, where your home is, you are called to build and not destroy. We are called to use our wisdom, the wisdom that we get from God. Whether it is in the workplace, you are called to build and not to destroy. Whether it is in your community, you are called to build and not to destroy. We are called to, 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 to build and bring things forth and bring the plan of God forth, not to destroy. We cannot be used by the enemy to fulfill his plan. And I'm asking you that let us go back. Let us go back to God and start rebuilding our homes and start rebuilding our families, start rebuilding our communities, because it starts in the family. If you've got a child with someone, stop fighting. Stop fighting your other partner. Stop fighting the, the, your children's father. If he's a good father to the kids, he's not abusing them. Stop bathmouthing him to the, to the kids. Allow the children to have a relationship with their father. If you are a man, do not bathmouth your children's mother. Allow them to have a relationship with her. Allow them, allow her to be a mother to your children. 
because kids need both both parents they need the daddy they need the mummy it, it, it's it's small things like that for example if you say it's 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 a father's day i've seen many women on father's day coming out and saying uh happy father's day to me happy father's day to my sisters who are doing it alone that is so wrong you are not a father you will never be a father you are a mother and that is it leave it at that let the men have let the kids celebrate their father without us wanting to get involved we have mother's day we have women's day so let us allow the men to also have a stand and have a say so that we can get together and start healing one another so that we can go back and walk in purpose whether it is in the workplace whether it is in our relationship in our community in our family we were not called or created to have competition with one another but we were called to walk together to fulfill to fulfill the plan of god on this planet earth the body of christ the army consists of both the male and the female it doesn't consist of just the male it doesn't consist of just the female but it consists of all of us together so let us go back to the foundation let us fight this let us fight the injustice that is happening in our families let us be real let us get real with one another no one is innocent the males are not innocent the women are not innocent but if we can come together and acknowledge the pain that we have caused one another and open our hearts before god and be broken before god so that god can bring restoration then we can start to see the revival that we've been calling out for because it always starts within the family everything starts in the family structure god is all about the family structure so i am pleading with you my sisters this is women's month it is not a time for us to be crying out and insulting one another or insulting men but it is a time to reflect on who god created us to be as women and celebrate that leave the bitterness but let us celebrate one another and celebrate the fact that we are women. I thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye.